What if you suddenly had three new brothers and sisters? Because it does. No, it doesn't. Deals doesn't matter. It happened to Andrew and Ashley. Uh, it was really hard to get along with the other kids. I didn't like having like a whole new family. I was against it. Andrew and Ashley's mom married Michael, who had three kids of his own, Tiffany, Melissa, and Derek. It was a huge life change for everyone, and not an easy one. We didn't get along with her at first at all. Like, um, she had this thing against my mom, and like my mom had this thing against her, and they were always fighting. I would say that he wasn't my real dad, and I would just get angry all the time and go up to my room and just stay in there. The transition from living in separate houses to living under the same roof isn't easy. But getting angry or frustrated and staying in your room won't solve the problem. What can this blended family do to cope with the changes they're experiencing? Change is a normal part of life. Many changes affect families in significant ways. Divorce, moving, job loss, and sometimes change is just a normal part of growing up. So how many couples are we talking about? For most of her life, Lauren had a great relationship with her mom until she turned 13. We fought all the time. I, gosh, I felt like we would fight almost every day. And it was usually screaming, yelling, drag out fights. And that change, the disagreements and fights, had Lauren turning to others for support. I started hanging out with my friends more. I wanted more to do with my friends than I did with my family, especially my mother. The change in Lauren's life has a name. It's called adolescence, growing up, a time when teens try to become more independent from their parents. While the quest for independence can be stressful, it's also perfectly normal. It's that age when you want to get away from your parents and do things on your own. I think it was just we both wanted to be in control. She wanted to be in control of her life, and I still wanted to have some control over her life. After talking with friends and her dad, Lauren figured out that she didn't really hate her mom. I enjoyed spending time with my friends more than I enjoyed spending time with her, and it wasn't because of who she was. Like, it wasn't her personally, it was just my parents versus my friends and which one I would rather spend more time with. And slowly, over weeks and then months, her mom had to accept that her daughter was growing up and Lauren had to stop pushing her mom away. And our relationship changed, I think because she finally relaxed and we started to work out. I, I tried not to scream at her, I tried not to get mad at her because she was growing up to be a young woman. And I, I realized that you know, this is a good thing, and you know, for a while I fought it. I love her a lot. She's one of, I mean, I consider her one of my good friends. I can talk to her about anything. It's it's Rose's turn to deal. She'll you deal with them. Changes aren't always what they seem to be. At first, a change may appear negative, but look closer, carefully examine the change, and you may discover that it's not nearly as bad as you think, that it may even be a positive in your life. That's exactly what happened to Marcus and Brandy. I'll fix you up, Grandma. My grandmother, my two great-grandmothers, which is my grandma's mother and my grandpa's mother and my aunt lives here. And then we have a cat. We can't forget Pooter, the cat. <laughs> Marcus and Brandy had to adjust to living with their extended family. It meant Marcus had to move out of his bedroom and give it to his grandmother. This is where I stay now. I like my little area. He doesn't have his own room now, and at first, he didn't like it. I was kind of angry at times, but because it was, you know, my room, but since she came, you know, she's my grandmother. I love her, so I gave her my room. Well, I think Marcus probably more than any uh, has made the sacrifice, you know, he had to give up his room. It's normal to expect mixed feelings when we experience change. But Marcus was able to find a positive aspect to his new situation. He got closer to the older members of his family. I have to thank not only for myself, but about them. You know, make sure they're doing all right. Four generations of this family live under the same roof. Family life is definitely more crowded. Most days it is fun, there is joy, but there are fights 
and there are setbacks. But I'm not saying it's easy and it's not the ideal. Sometimes it's like when I'm uh, when I'm like angry or something, I want my own space, you know. But when it's like like a day like today, it really doesn't matter. And days like today add up. And before long, you get used to the change. I like it because I have things to do, you know. I can help my grandma Rose with puzzles and games and stuff. I just think that's kind of cool that you have a lot of older people living with you. Instead of them being somewhere like in a nursing home or something, they can be around their family a lot. And so they don't feel like lonely or anything or like nobody's there for them. At first, the changes were hard. Too many people, not enough room. But then, for Brandy and Marcus, there was another change. This crowded house is their home, and helping grandparents and great-grandparents isn't a chore anymore. Maybe like when they passed on, you know, you could say that you were there for them, and you knew, you know, what, who they were, and they did stuff for you, you know, return the favor, so, you know, you'll never forget about them. I've gained some responsibility. Uh, maybe I've learned to love, love more, you know and give more instead of always trying to receive. <laughs> Money, or lack of it, has meant change for Candace and her mom. We need to spa try to space this out if we can. Well, cause I initially got, the, got a job so that I could spoil myself. But now, the income from that job is more important than ever. Candace's mom got laid off five months ago. Most days, Alice is on the computer, posting her resume looking for a job. And Candace is both optimistic and discouraged. Well, I know she's going to get one, but it's just in my head like, she's never going to get a job because she hasn't had one for so long. This kind of was a blow, was a big blow to us because things were coming together. This setback has given Candace a chance to take more responsibility. She's learning how to more carefully handle her money. Instead of spending my paychecks all on clothes and shoes, I try to save them. She still keeps some of her paycheck, but she also helps out with the household bills. Now it turns out like I'm not really doing anything for myself. I'm just paying the stuff that needs to be paid. And helping to pay the bills has given Candace experience money can't buy. I've watched her sit down at a table and, and take all her um, paycheck amounts and scratch it out and say, okay, this week I can pay for this, which is amazing because, you know, before it was like her money was spent the minute she got it. And um, she's really grown up in, in that way. Even though she doesn't ask me to, but I know that it would be less stress on her if I paid for some of it. One way people can cope with change is to develop a support system. One place to start is your family. Some pull together as a team to face adversity out in the world and the family comes closer by struggling with adversity. It's sort of an attitude, we're gonna get through this together. They talk, they argue, they help each other. In the end, they will get through this together. Divorce can be one of the biggest changes teenagers have to deal with. The pain can last a long time. Kelly's parents divorced when she was a baby. And for 18 years that I have witnessed, they can't even get along. She has struggled to cope with the ups and downs of her parents' relationship. You always feel like, okay, well, I'm on my dad's side today, or I'm on my mom's side today, and my mom's right and my dad's wrong, and you feel like you have to be on one side or the other. And it's kind of hard to feel like you have to turn yourself against one. The impact on Kelly's life goes beyond her family. So I found myself having kind of a trusting problem, um, and not just, I, in just relationships in general. Um, and, I, and I kind of, because you feel like um, you're kind of being turned on at times. Kelly thinks because of the divorce, she may never trust anyone in an intimate relationship. And it's very hard to believe that any relationship that I find is going to be lasting. Because it's hard to think that my parents got married and had a child thinking that they were going to be together and all of this happened. But what happened wasn't anything Kelly could control. It was her parents' decision and theirs alone. Still, that feeling of helplessness can make the hurt even worse. The loss also comes because there's a loss of control. 
because all those decisions being made about separations and moving and divorce and parents dating and parents remarrying, none of that stuff is, is, is a, a decision that kids make. Those are all things that happen around them. Kelly has to take small steps to heal herself. First, to know that what happened is not her fault. And now, she has to look ahead. The other thing that I suggest is please don't look backwards, look forward. How do you build the future? Little by little, Kelly started to appreciate both her parents as individuals, separate from each other. You know, I realized I like, you know, my mom is wonderful for these reasons and my dad is wonderful for these reasons and I can appreciate both of them and maybe they don't get along and appreciate each other, but I can see what the good things are. Oh, I just want her to be secure and happy. Even though I know that they're still angry with each other, I know they know down, deep down that the other one is my parent too and they love me just as much and I should love them just as much. In this house, divorce led to a union of one mother, one father, and five kids. But it's been a bit rocky, the whole process of learning to live with new brothers and sisters and new parents. The challenges were uh, having my kids listen to Gladys and having her kids listen to me. Uh, they did. But it's important to listen, and it's important to respect the people you are living with. Eventually, the kids and their parents banded together and decided to make this family work. It, it was a little hectic. It was uh, a lot of adjusting, uh, a lot of who's going to be in what room and whose stuff belonged where and who got the bathrooms. To improve their living situation, the family started out by taking small steps. We did a lot of traveling. We went to motorhomes, and those are small to begin with. So we figured if we could get along more in a motorhome, the house would be a little bit easier. There's another way to make the change easier. Talk about it. It's so important for you to express what you're feeling in some way. It can look like talking to your parents. It can look like talking to a, a good family friend or a relative. It can look like talking to a counselor. It can look like writing in a journal at nighttime. So talking together, being able to have somebody kind of walk you through, okay, this is what it's supposed to be like. Let's try it. Now, tension has been replaced by laughter and fun. <laughs> I finally started to just like listen to what Gladys had to say like for myself and she's not really a bad person at all. Doing stuff with them, they seem pretty cool. And we both had vision and that's what's most important, to know how it can be and should be. We're all different but we're all one big family. When families experience change, what steps can they take to cope with the change? 